Hello and welcome everyone to the Environment Primer series of Dish DIS. My name is Pragya and today we are going to discuss a very important topic that has remained in news throughout the world and has impacted the world as well as India and has caused loss of lives. The title of our today's discussion is the science behind earthquakes. Okay, so we are discussing de in detail earthquakes today. In this discussion, we will firstly see what is an earthquake. Then we are also going to analyze what exactly causes an earthquake. Then we are also going to see can earthquakes be predicted. We are also going to analyze the causes behind frequent earthquakes in world this year. And we are also going to see what led to uh, what led to frequent earthquakes in India this year. And in the end we are going to see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. So if I talk about the background of our topic today that many of the uh, countries in the world have faced huge amount of earthquakes this year. The more significant ones being in the Turkey and Syria. Which has caused huge amount of loss of lives as well as destruction. So this brings us to the moot question of our today's discussion that what exactly is an earthquake. So if I talk about what exactly is an earthquake in very simple or layman terms. It means that uh, it is a continuous uh, shaking of uh, ground above the earth's surface due to the mo movements in the below the earth's crust. So, an earthquake is an intense shaking of the ground caused by movement under the earth's surface. And why does this happen? This happens due to the very famous plate tectonic theory. Plate tectonic theory. Okay, so what happens is the earth's crust is divided into various form of plates that has led to formation of continents okay and these plates although they do not generally move but once they move what happens is they collide with each other for example this is plate 1 and this is plate 2 they are moving very slowly but once they move they collide with each other and they slip past one another and hence causing the earthquake okay so it happens when two blocks of the earth suddenly slip past one another according to the US Geological Survey and this slipping past of two plates with one another releases the elastic strain energy that is stored up in the form of seismic waves and that is why you experience so much of vibration during the earthquake okay and which spreads through the earth and causes the shaking of the ground and hence we experience the earthquake okay. Moving forward, the location below the earth's surface where the earthquake starts is called the hypocenter and the location directly above it on the surface of the earth is called the epicenter. Let us now discuss this and let us now understand the anatomy of an earthquake by way of a pictorial representation which will make my explanation very easier to you. So, this is basically an anatomy of an earthquake, okay. So, what you can see that two plates are there and they are moving towards each other they collided and hence causing a fault line so what is a fault it is a fracture in the rocks that make up the earth's crust due to the break, uh, colliding of the plates okay and what are these plates they are massive rocks that make up the outer layer of the earth's surface and whose movement along faults triggers the earthquake and as you can see these are the seismic waves as then this is the focus and just the point below above focus on the earth's surface is known as the epicenter of the earthquake. So, this is the anatomy of an earthquake. Now, let us discuss and analyze what exactly causes an earthquake. So, as I was explaining to you before, the main phenomenon responsible for earthquakes is the plate tectonic theory, the sudden slipping past of two plates with one another. Okay, so as we know the earth's outermost surface crust is fragmented into tectonic plates. Okay, the edges of the plates are called plate boundaries which are made up of faults. So, these are the two plates, plate number one, plate number two. Okay, so edges of these uh, plates is known as the plate boundary. Okay, and these are cores made up of coarse things and known as, this is known as the fault. Okay. The tectonic plates constantly move at a slow place. So, these plates as I was explaining to you before also, they are moving at a very slow play pace. But what happens is they are moving and sliding past one another and bumping into one another. 
so what happens is due to their slow movement even if they are moving very slowly but there are chances that they will so collide they will bump into one another they will uh, slide one past one another and hence causing earthquakes so this was this is what i was explaining to you before also so as the edges of the plates are quite rough they get stuck with one another while the rest of the plates keep moving so what happens is these edges also known as the plate boundaries are very coarse very rough and so they get stuck to one another they are not able to move and the plate continuously keeps moving and hence a fault is caused okay so this fault is caused due to the sticking of the edges and moving of the plates towards one another okay so the plates keep moving but the edges get stuck hence by causing a fault okay so the earthquake occurs when the plate has moved far enough and edges unstick on one of the faults so this is cause this causes earthquake that when the plates have moved far enough and uh, but the the edges which were once stick together unstick on one of the faults hence causing the earthquake okay thus the slipping of the land along the fault line along convergent divergent and transform boundary so these are the three kinds of plate boundaries convergent divergent and transform boundaries and hence the earthquakes are caused okay the point where the where the energy is released is the called of the focus of the earthquake alternatively it is also called the hypocenter so this is what i was discussing to you before that the point at which this earthquake starts below the earth surface is known as the focus of the earthquake and the point just above the earth surface is known as the epicenter epi center and these are the seismic waves as we have also seen in our pictorial representation of an autonym of an earthquake okay so the uh, epicenter focus and everything i hope it's clear to you that the plates although they are moving slowly with each other they move and hence they slide into one another they bump into one another another or they slide past into one another they have very rough boundaries known as the plate boundaries they they are of three types convergent divergent and transform boundaries and the edges stick to one another the plates move far away from one another and hence causing a fault and what happens is there is a slipping of land along this fault and hence the vibration occurs and thereby causing an earthquake so this was a crisp and a short summary of how earthquake actually occurs so this is the pictorial representation of whatever i have explained till now that this is the this is the fault scrap okay these are the two plates and due to the moving of the plates this fault scrap occurs then what happens is the land is slide uh, slid like the land slips away along this fault strap and hence causing the seismic waves release of this seismic waves and this is the focus this is the epicenter and these are the wave fronts and this is the fault okay so this is the fault so i hope it is now clear that how an actual uh, uh, how an earthquake actually occurs okay moving forward let us discuss that can we actually predict an earthquake because the destruction the damage the loss of life is huge in earthquake so the general answer is no why because an accurate prediction of an earthquake requires some sort of a precursory signal from within the earth that indicates a big quake is on the way but we do not have any such device to determine or detect this premix signals that earth is giving to us okay moreover the signal must occur only before large earthquake so that it doesn't indicate every small movement within the earth surface there are various movements within the earth surface okay there are tectonic forces of the earth that are acting in the earth surface so we need a accurate device which predicts large movements below the earth surface not the smaller ones otherwise it will keep on realerting us about that okay an earthquake is about to happen so it should be accurate and it should only detect large movements okay currently there is no equipment to find such precursors even if they exist and that is why it is almost impossible to predict an earthquake moving forward let us see the causes uh, of the earthquake in the world this year for the first country we'll be talking about is turkey and syria so what happens with turkey is it is a in a seismically active zone and monday's quakes 
struck along a well known fault line called the Anatolia tectonic block. So, the earthquake which occurred in Turkey and Syria, killing about 3,700 people and causing a lot of destruction, was uh, due to the fault line known as the Anatolia tectonic block. Okay, they were shallow, which made them more devastating. So, there are two types of uh, earthquake deep earthquakes and shallow earthquakes. Shallow earthquakes generally means that it is 0 to 70 mm. Okay, so these shallow earthquakes are capable of causing more destruction than the deep earthquakes. Okay, so the seismic city in this region is a result of interactions between the African Eura uh, Eurasian and Arabic plates. The Arabian plate is known to be pushing northward which results in a slight westward movement for the Anatolian plate where Turkey is located and that is why we say that Tur Turkey is uh, located in a seismically active zone and which causes earthquakes again and again. In. So, Anatolia uh, fault line is the major responsible for having earthquakes and the Arabian plate is also known to be moving in the northward direction. So, what does this tell us that earthquakes occur due to the plate tectonics theory, the moving of the plates, okay. Now, talking about another country, Nepal. Who can forget the 2015 earthquakes of Nepal? They were so destructive, they almost destroyed whole of the Nepal. And Nepal has suffered a serious earthquake in November 2023 as well, okay. So, the reason was plate tectonics of South Asia. So, one thing we can figure out from all of this discussion that the major cause of any earthquake is the plate tectonics theory. Kindly remember this point, okay. So, what happens with Nepal is Nepal lies in the Himalayas where earthquake activity is associated with the ongoing continental collision with, between the Indian and the Eurasian plate. So, Himalayan region is very seismically active zone and Nepal falls between the Indian and the Eurasian plains as well as in the Himalayan region and that is why earthquakes are more frequent in Nepal, okay. Then comes earthquakes in Afghanistan. The main reason behind Afghanistan earthquakes are is the shallow thrust faulting. So, I will explain to you what this shallow thrust faulting is but uh, the problem with Afghanistan is it lies on the various multiple fault lines. There is just not one fault line, there are various multiple fault lines and hence become the region is becoming more and more prone to the occurring of earthquakes. So, now let us understand what is this shallow thrust faulting is, okay. So, a thrust fault is a break in the earth's crust across which older rocks are pushed away above the younger rocks, okay. So, what happens is these are the supposedly these are the older rocks, okay, older rocks and these are quite the younger rocks, okay. This is only a hypothetical diagram to explain you the concept. So, these are the older rocks and these are the younger rocks, okay. And this older rocks gets pushed above the younger rocks and that is why it is known as a thrust fault, creating a thrust fault, okay. So, shallow thrust faulting is a type of reverse fault in which fault plane has a very shallow dip, typically much less than 45 degree. Whenever we see that due to the plate tectonics theory, the plates are moving and across the fault line they dip and the land slips away. So, what happens is when along the shallow thrust fault, the land slips, it generally slips at a degree of 45 degree. It has a dip of 45 degree. Let us understand this better by a pictorial representation. Okay, so this is the surface stress of a fault and see the angle here. It is exactly making a 45 degree angle and the dip is exactly at a 45 degree angle and this is basically a shallow thrust fault which is responsible for earthquakes in Afghanistan but earthquakes in Afghanistan are also caused because it lies in the multiple fault lines reason. The Hindu Kush mountains and the Pamir knot are very famous for seismic activities, okay. Now, let us discuss and analyze that what causes uh, are there behind recent earthquakes happening in India. So, recent seismic activity in parts of North India and Nepal has been attributed to the activation of the Almora fault in the uh, Uttarakhand uh, state of India. 
दिस स्टेटमेंट इज बाई द मिनिस्टर ऑफ अर्थ साइंसेस इन दी लोकसभा लेट मी नो इन दी कमेंट बॉक्स बिलो डेट हु इज द करेंट मिनिस्टर ऑफ अर्थ साइंसेज इन इंडिया ओके सो दीज इवेंट्स वर फॉलोड बाई न्यूमिरस आर्ट आफ्टर शॉक्स कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू एन इंक्रीज फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ सीस्मिक डिस्टर्बेंसेज थ्रू आउट द ईयर सो ही हैज इन्फॉर्म द लोकसभा डेट येस द अलमोरा फॉल्ट हैज अवेकन हैज यू नो एक्टिवेटेड एंड डेट इज वाई वी आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग सो मच ऑफ अर्थ क्वेक्स इन इंडिया एंड नेपाल so this was the statement made by our earth sciences minister in the lok sabha so what is it, exactly is this almora fault and uh, how is it causing earthquakes in india so the earth almora fault is a significant geological structure in the western himalayas has been identified as a key player in the region's tectonics okay and this high angle fault trends from west northwest to east southwest and northwest southeast demarcating the boundary between different geological groups within the lesser himalaya so basically as i was explaining to you before also the himalayan region is very prone to seismic activities due to to the moving of indian and the eurasian plates and that is why all these regions become more prone to natural hazards such as the earthquake due to their high frequency of seismic activity okay in its recent activation has raised concern about regional uh, safety and preparedness so the almora region fault line has been activated and this region is famous for its geological tectonic activities and hence more earthquakes in india and nepal okay now this also raises the question about how prepared are we how vulnerable india is to earthquake and what are we actually doing to prevent the earthquake so Uh, the minister has said that we release seismic zone map of india and this helps us in determining the seismic zones which are more prone to earthquakes and that is why we are paying attention to building infrastructure and preparing the regions if certain natural hazards occur with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion we have seen what are earthquakes we have also seen that how are they caused we have also seen what causes the world's earthquake this year we have also seen what has caused the indian earthquakes this year now let us see a practice question for your prelims examination so the question is consider the following statements your statement number 1 is magnitude of earthquake is measured on the richter scale your statement number 2 is p waves are recorded first on the seismographs which of the following statements given above is are correct your options are option a is one only option b is two only option c is both one and two and option d is none of the above kindly drop your answers in the comment box below now let us analyze and discuss a practice question for your mains examination so the question is discuss the vulnerability of india to earthquake related hazards so we have seen uh, sorry in the introduction you will write that what are earthquakes then you will briefly explain how are they caused okay then you will write the reasons behind indian earthquakes this year as i have discussed in my discussion today then you will write that yes there is a question about how prepared are we to handle such uh, natural hazards like earthquake then you will uh, mention about the seismic zone map of india and you can conclude holistically that yes by monitoring the seismic zones by making them more uh, prepared we can definitely pre uh, prevent the damage if effects caused by an earthquake so you can conclude very holistically i hope this session was insightful for you if you have any suggestion about this session kindly drop it in the comment box below if you found the today's discussion to be helpful kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates thank you